I've always loved this road into my home place at Balaki. The sweeping bends, the secret landscapes that lie just off it. The thatch cottage, recently refurbished, known simply as Katie's Cottage. At the crest of the hill, the village itself comes into view. The distinctive round tower at the 17th century Balaki Bon, or the castle as locals call it. Then round the corner the stooped figure of the turf man, unveiled by the late great Seamus Heaney in his last civic duty for the people of Balaki. Castle Street dates from the same period as the Bon and serves as the principal gateway to and from Belfast and once hosted a monthly cattle market, now lost in the annals of time. Graham's supermarket on the corner where we went to get the groceries before the big retailers arrived. And of course we still collect the odds and ends there and catch up on the gossip. Down Main Street past the old Peter England shirt factory and on to William Street with its 19th century terraces. out past the health centre the control primary school and the rectory and just off to the right through the trees you might get a glimpse of the manse recently refurbished and then we approach the steep turn at St Mary's Catholic Church Burial place, of course, of the great Seamus Heaney. Then right towards, on towards Balinese and the lush countryside of South Derry. Following this road will take you eventually to Portland Own, just across the nearby River Ban and County Antrim but that is not our destination today. Turning right will take you into the townland of Balinese and down to New Ferry. And we now join the Ballamacombs Road. This is the area where Seamus Heaney's family moved to in the 1950s when they uh, inherited a farm just here with a group of three grown trees is called the Wood. Of course in Seamus Heaney's day and his youth this would probably have been a single track road. Out past the Burmans The bus from Portland on to Balahi. Out past Mulholland's farm. And Tamnadoff Road, where I live. And this is called Mulholland's Corner. This is where I used to get the bus to secondary school. Now the straight stretch up towards the Sheep Hills, our next destination.
You could well miss this turn off the Ballamacombs Road unless you knew of it. Blink and you'll miss the small sign for Sheep Hills and the winding Lonan that takes you to Toner's Bog, made famous in Seamus Heaney's eponymous poem, Digging. When I was a boy, there were no houses along this lane, and it consisted of dirt and gravel, which we negotiated on our bikes. But of course today, it is the home to many local families who cherish its remoteness, and of course its tranquillity. This lovely tree-lined avenue is a hidden gem, but rewards us with vibrant and striking spring and autumn displays, as well as being a symbolic gateway to one of Seamus Heaney's most iconic spaces, Toner's Bog. You can just imagine Seamus Heaney as a small boy, making his way along this path from the wood, with a bottle of milk for his grandfather, Corked sloppily with paper, as he described it, where he was cutting the turf to heat the house over the winter. We'll stop here just now, and it's just a short walk up over the hill up over the sheep hills in fact, to where Toner's Bog sits, in total silence now, but once resonant to the banter and laughter of the turf cutters, heaving their sods, digging. We can now make our way upwards, to where we can look out across one of the last surviving raised bogs in Ireland, and of course, where Toner's Bog itself is located. It is a steep climb, but we will be rewarded with great, uninterrupted views across the boglands, to where the Sparren Mountains sit gently on the horizon, dominated of course by Slave Gallion, described by Seamus Heaney as the prenatal mountain. It's time to pause now and look out across Toner's Bog and away off towards the Sparren Mountains in the distance. Of course it is by this stage obvious how this green oasis in the brown expanse of the moss got its name, the Sheep Hills, and these ladies are taking an obvious interest in this particular visitor. Between my finger and my thumb, the squat pen rests, snug as a gun. Under my window a clean rasping sound, a spade sinks into gravelly ground, my father digging. I look down till his straining rump among the flower beds, bends low, comes up twenty years away, stooping in rhythm through potato drills where he was digging. The coarse boot nestled in the lug, the shaft against the inside knee was levered firmly. He rooted out tall tops, buried the bright edge deep, to scatter new potatoes that we picked, loving their cool hardness in our hands. By God the old man could handle a spade, just like his old man. My grandfather cut more turf in a day than any other man in Toner's Bog. 
Once I carried him milk in a bottle, corked sloppily with paper. He straightened up to drink it, then fell to right away, nicking and slicing neatly, heaving sods over his shoulder, going down and down for the good turf, digging. The cold smell of potato mould, the squelch and slap of soggy peat, the curt cuts of an edge through living roots awaken in my head. But I've no spade to follow men like them. Between my finger and my thumb, the squat pen rests, I'll dig with it. Seamus Heaney travelled the world throughout his lifetime and his career. Annie is often quoted as saying that this place, the stranded Loch Beg, was his favourite place. A space that he returned to in his imagination wherever in the world he found himself. He often evoked the spirituality of the strand and the distant church island with his famous spire setting its tree line of view. And it's also the place that came to mind as we recall the murder of his second cousin, Colin McCartney, during the Northern Ireland Troubles. Here is an extract from that work which brings this extraordinary place to life and meaning. Across that strand of ours the cattle graze, up to their bellies in an early mist. And now they turn their unbewildered gaze to where we work our way through squeaking sedge, drowning in dew. Like a dull blade with its edge hone bright, Loch Beg half shines under the haze. I turn because the sweeping of your feet has stopped behind me, to find you on your knees, with blood and roadside muck in your hair and eyes. Then kneel in front of you in brimming grass, and gather up cold handfuls of the dew to wash you, cousin. I dab you clean with moss, fine as a drizzle out of a low cloud. I lift you onto the arms and lay you flat. With rushes that shoot green again, I plant green scapulars to wear over your shroud. Church Island has been a constant for generations of people from Balachi. Yet little known outside of this parish other than by those who keep it in state care. We approach the island from the strand and are immediately drawn to the church of St. Hyde, a contemporary of St. Patrick, dating back to early Christian Ireland. In the 12th century there would have been a monastery here, and the Mulhollands of nearby Tamladuff were keepers of the St. Patrick Bell from the 9th century. The steeple and tower were later additions to the old church by Bishop Harvey, the Earl Bishop of Derry of the Anglican Church in Ireland. Completed in 1788 to a design also authorised for the Church of Ireland in Balachi as it is today. The tower was designed by Shanahan the architect and built by local stonemason Michael Keenan. It of course served no practical purpose than to improve the bishop's view from the grand palace he was building at nearby Ballascullion. In memory of Johnny, Johnny Stewart, who kept this place nice for so many years. Rest in peace, Johnny. The yew tree, of course, is symbolic of the Irish cemetery or graveyard. And of course, the steeple reaching to heaven and the tower, all symbolic of God's reach. As you make your way from the old graveyard towards Loch Beg, you'll follow this path covered with cow parsley, and at this time of year, with bluebells. You will come across a bull on stone and an old tree adorned with rags. 
people in, people in pagan times worshipped stone, water and trees and this carried through to Christianity. People still dip rags in the water that gathers in the hole in the bull on stone and hang them on the tree to cure ailments and infections, something carried out to this day. From the rag tree we follow the path down onto the shoreline at Loch Beg. Loch Beg derives from the Irish Loch Beg, meaning little lake, against its comparative lake Loch Ne, which means big lake nearby. Located as it is on the River Ban between counties Derry and County Antrim in Northern Ireland. The Lower Ban River flows into it from Loch Ney at the southern end and continues on its route to the sea from the northern end. We've just seen Church Island which is on the lake and which was the site of a pre vagging monastery and during the summer or indeed the spring as we are in now, is normally reachable by foot. The area has many rare plants and, it being a stopping point for migrating birds, it was protected as a Loch Bake Natural Nature Reserve. Let's hope it stays that way. <laughs>